Guys, Andrew Dwight. Hey, I'm going to talk today about brick peer estimating and uh, some changes that we've made to make it more accurate for yourself. First, I'm going to explain a little bit about brick peers. This is the plus put back output of a brick peer. Uh, you'll notice that it doesn't have every individual brick put in there because if we did this, would actually slow it down, and you probably start to grunt at the computer. Why is it going so slow? So what we did, we actually uh, reduced the amount of geometry so that you could. Uh, get the right estimate without having to slow down any. All right, and as you can see that there are different types of brick peers, so I'm just going to quickly blast over here to the first type, and I'm talking metric, it's a metric brick according to Australia, however, if you're using the US library, this will do the same thing uh, in the US and the UK. What we have done here in Australia, and I think it's something that uh, we will do around the world as uh, time goes on, is we've actually associated real products. So this is actually a real brick by a real manufacturer. The colour is correct, the mortar and the size is correct. Okay, so, and if I actually uh, did an estimate, you can see on the left hand side, I've got 24 bricks in this pier. I'm just going to do a takeoff, and you'll notice here, I've got brickwork. So I've got a summary, then I've got brickwork, okay? So I have 24 bricks in total. If I just want to know the square area of it, I can just click on the yellow and I'll get the square area. If you're using a brick that may not be uh, a manufacturer-based product, you can do it that way. But there's 24 bricks here. In the new plus pick, you can also add wastage. Uh, but I'm just going to show this here. What I did is I used the BIM tool just so I could double check my output. You can see here I have 24 bricks and it's just a generic brick. So if I go back to uh, sketch up and plus spec, you will notice that I am correct. Now what happens if you're going to use a brick that has a different size? Let's have a look. So you'll notice here that we have uh, an optical brick range, which is an Australian manufacturer that we use. However, this can be any manufacturer. If they send us the information we require, we can put their bricks in so it will be actually utilised. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, a Austral Barrel 50, which basically means that the brick is 50 mil or 2 inches high. And I'm just going to put this brick in here now. And you can see that there's a substantial difference in size there. When I do a takeoff, I'm going to do a takeoff now, and I go to my brickwork here, you'll notice that I actually have more bricks, obviously because there is more bricks inside of the thing. However, the square measurement is still the same. So it's pretty cool, and it's and it's a big incentive for uh, brick companies to be on, and for us as designers or builders, it's excellent for being able to uh, do a bill of quantities. Now, something I need to explain about these bricks. I'm going to delete this one here because it doesn't need to be there, and I'm going to go to a 230 by 350 pier, and you can see that it has three bricks per course, and there's 12 courses here. When I do a takeoff, it'll be correct as well. So, quickly do a takeoff. Uh, look at my 230 by 350, I've got 36 bricks, and in my brickwork I have 36 bricks, and if I want to figure out my square measures, I also have that as well. Okay, so the same goes with the 350 pier. I don't think I need to go over the same thing over and over. However, with a, a 350 pier or a one and a half brick pier, you'll notice we have a hollow center. And it could be done in both ways. Just so you're aware, that Plusbeck actually estimates the total bricks on the outside, assuming that it's a, a hollow brick, and I'll explain to you how to actually fill this in in a second. So therefore, uh, we won't allow for a brick in here by default, but we will allow for the right amount of bricks, because as you can see, one brick has a face on the edge. You see, so we don't want to allow for that in total. We need to allow for the correct amount of bricks, and this has been uh, something we've been working on for some time now. So a hollow brick pier on a, on a say, a, a two brick uh, column uh, will obviously have six bricks per course. <clears throat> and if I do the takeoff, trust me, it's right, it'll work. Uh, however, when I have a solid column, uh, I need to have bricks in here if it is a solid column. In some cases, you would simply use a metal post which you can find up in your components, and you can just go to a, a rectangular column uh, out of steel, and just simply scroll through here, and go submit, and you can go and put in your column to whatever height you please, wherever you want it to go, and that's reasonably simple to do. It will now estimate a column and also the bricks. 
It will also allow you to put bottom plates and top plates and other things in it. As you can see here, I can choose the size of my post, and obviously in America it's going to come out a different, it's going to come out imperial. The height, whether it's going to be galvanized or just a red oxide. You can have base plates, top plates, both. Uh, and I might change the height of it, in this case, eight feet. Uh, number of holes, this is going to be welded. Maybe I even want to put some notes in there about it. Uh, special post. Okay. Uh, it's going to go on a different layer. You can change that yourself. I'm going to go submit. And now you can see that I now have my base plates top and bottom. And if I wanted to put that inside of my column, I could quite easily do that. Shift and move it to wherever I want to do if it's going to line up with the beam. Want to do a takeoff? Here, you'll notice that on my engineering, I have the height and the size of the, the column. I also have the weight of the column, which is really important. Uh, so you have a lot of information there. You can also use a post tool and put a timber post inside of there if you want to, or, or wood post if you're in the States. All right, so you can see we've kind of covered that. Now I'm going to explain to you how to go about actually creating a solid pier. So what I'm going to do, let's get out of this. Go to my com tool. Uh, masonry rectangular. And I'm going to make it, uh, this is a 470 pier. So sizing, 470, 470. If you're using Imperial, write in eight inches or 10 inches or 12 inches, whatever it is. Submit, and I'm putting in my column. Okay, as I mentioned before, it is a hollow column. All right. So now what I need to actually do is I need to put another column inside of it. Let me go back to my column tool. Go to my sizing, and inside of it will be 230 by 230. Go submit. Right, and simply move it to the center. If you want to be accurate, you're obviously going to put it dimensions. I'm just going to move it there because I think you get the idea. Now this will be a solid pier, and this one here would be a hollow pier, and my estimates will work accordingly. If you're having to do this several times, you might have an array of piers or whatever. What you would do is select it like I did. It's a space bar, select, and I could say, well, I might want them at 10 feet center. Enter, and I want... I'll zoom out so you can see what happens here. I want three of them, another three of them. Okay, and now I have an equal spacing between my columns, which is great for girders or bearers and joists or beams uh, to be able to sit on and you've got the correct estimate. Even if you're going to do a single skin, so it might be whatever the thickness of your brick is by the length of the brick, uh, it will still do the right estimate for you. So it's been a fair bit of time improving this and this actually leads on to some other improvements that we will be showing shortly. Uh, to do with uh, how to space your girders or your bearers underneath uh, your joists uh, so that way you can do that. We're also working on uh, footings and how to have steel uh, or rebar associated inside of your footings. There's a lot going on here guys so Plusspec 19 is where you're going to see this. However this release uh, that I've showed you now will be up in the next release so keep an eye out for it. Cheers guys.